20 mistakes that I did as an Amazon seller that has cost me lakhs of rupees in losses. And I promise you, out of these 20 mistakes, you will do the last five mistakes. So stay till the end and watch the entire video. Hi, my name is Viral and I am an entrepreneur. I talk about business and online selling. So let's talk about the 20 mistakes that I did as an Amazon seller. The number one mistake that I did as an Amazon seller was to start selling on other people's listing. Now, if you are a seller and you're thinking of starting to sell an online product, most probably we think that, hey, you know, if this listing is already selling, let me just buy the product and start mapping to the listing. Now, the problem over here is a lot of people are brand registered seller. And when they see that you are trying to take all the hard work that they have done and just sell the same item at a lower price, chances are very, very high that they will start writing or filing a complaint against you. And if you have a lot of inventory at your disposal, it can actually cost you lakhs and lakhs of rupees. I did this mistake when I was selling in the US uh, at the time when I was just mapping on other people's listing and my account also got suspended and my listing was also suppressed and I was forced to remove the entire material from Amazon FBA just because of that mistake. The second mistake that I was doing or I have done is selling too many products at one go. I still remember that I was given an advice by some seller that, hey, if you want to be successful in online selling, you need to sell hundreds and thousands of products. You need to have a huge catalog. And this advice actually cost me a lot of money because when I started sourcing for online selling, instead of focusing on one, two or even three products, I was getting and sourcing hundreds of products which actually made me go into losses because of all these items I had to put a lot of investment a lot of images I had to put a lot of work in terms of the listing and at the end of the day I could not sell any of these items because my attention was diverted with all these products and when you know like when we have so many things to focus on Nothing actually works. So mistake number two was to sell so many SKUs at one go instead of just focusing on a couple of SKUs. Mistake number three, selling products which are low in prices. So at the start of the career, I now want to invest a lot of money on Amazon's product. And I started selling cheap products which are 299, 399. Now, Imagine when you have a product which is of such a low selling price, there is no entry to barrier. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can start launching the products at this price and they can knock you out of the market. And there is no much profit margin left when you are selling low selling products. So that was my mistake number three, selling cheap and low quality products at a low selling price. Mistake number four was trusting unknown people with money. So I still remember that I had gone to China to import products from uh, China to India for selling on Amazon. And that time I had a very good agent uh, that I had gone through from uh, my city to China. But just because I found someone over there who was ready to give me products or ship me products at a cheaper price, I actually started doing business with him. The first business that I did with him, meaning uh, he sent the goods from China to India. I got my material and I also paid him in advance. Second time, what happened was I gave him a bigger order because my item is selling pretty fast. What happened was I paid him the entire money and he never shipped me the goods. So don't trust unknown people without any history or track record for selling on Amazon or even sourcing your products. Mistake number five, stop selling those products which you have zero knowledge about. I still remember 
that when I started selling on Amazon with the categories like fashion, uh, it was a nightmare. I thought, hey, other people are making a lot of money. Let me get into this category. And instead of being successful at that category, I actually lost a lot of money. So don't sell into the categories which you don't understand anything about, like shoes, like jewelry. Just stay away from them if you do not have a thorough understanding of the category because it can actually break your business. Mistake number six, stop selling those products which are very, very bulky and heavy. I still remember I innovated a new product looking at the trends in the international market and launched the same product in India. Now, the problem was the product was really, really hot, you know, selling product. I was the only seller selling the exact same product. I was getting really good orders, but man oh man, the product was so heavy that when I used to ship the product from my place to consumer's place, there used to be some of the damages. I tried every single thing to make the packing so good with thermocol and everything, but still there were damages. And when customer used to ship those products back to me, they never used to ship back in the original packing, which again caused in transit damage. It will literally increase your return ratio and your overall loss ratio of the product to the huge level that it will become an unsellable item and you will be stuck forever selling that product. So stop selling those products which are very, very heavy, difficult to ship for you in your online journey. Mistake number seven, stop selling products online or stop being in that business where you don't even understand what is your profit margin. I struggled for months and years to understand how much am I really making in my business online. So always have a profit automation tool or at least have some mechanism to exactly understand how much are you making online? Otherwise, doing a business without even knowing are you making a profit or loss is not a business. It's just a hobby and that too, very, very expensive one. Mistake number eight. If you don't know how much returns are you getting, you will never know is your item just getting a lot of sales or there is an inherent problem. Now, I still remember there were items when I never used to focus that how much returns am I getting? The problem is you think you are making a lot of sales on those products because maybe they are selling very well, but what if they are getting 25, 30% return? If you don't track that, first of all, you'll get bad reviews, which will kill your product in the long run. Secondly, those returns can be so expensive because what if the returns are coming because of a quality issue that you're not able to resolve or you don't even know about? And the third problem with returns is it will kill your margins to the next level, which will make it very, very unprofitable. So always have a mechanism to track your returns. Mistake number nine. Have you ever been in a position where you had gone out of stock? Yes, I remember many, many, many times that my best selling items were out of stock. The reason was that I never had a very, very powerful tool or a system to forecast my inventory. Now imagine if you have a very, very good product which is selling very well and you go out of stock, Amazon will actually penalize you and de-rank you for so many keywords and all the effort that you have taken to come on page one for certain keywords will again go back. So have a very, very strong system of forecasting your inventory, maybe use an Excel or a Google Sheet or any other tool that will help you predict when you should be ordering and how much you should be ordering again your best selling products. Mistake number 10, Jo dikta hai wo bikta hai. How many of you have heard that kind of phrase? Yes, in online world, people actually buy from images. So if you are someone who doesn't spend so much money on having a professional image, your chances of product to sell very well will be decreased. So one of the mistakes that I did in my online journey was to have very, very low quality, okay, or average image. In fact, when you have an average image as compared to a very professional image, your conversions increase by 30%. 
So the one of the mistakes that I did as an online seller was to have very low quality average product images for my product, which cost me a lot of money. Mistake number 11. It is said that rich people do what is hard. That is why their life is easy. And poor people do what is easy. That is why their life is hard. Exactly that was the situation in my Amazon business. If you are selling on Amazon for a couple of years or months, you know the most complex subject on Amazon is Amazon advertising. So if you are someone who are not focusing, learning or understanding how Amazon ads work, you literally cannot scale your Amazon business. In my early stages of Amazon, I did not learn the, the concepts and the understanding of how to run Amazon advertising effectively and my sales never grew. And after a lot of time, trial and error, finding a mentor, I learned and mastered the art of Amazon advertising, which gave me almost an unfair advantage over everyone in the marketplace from competing to now dominating in Amazon marketplace. So that is the mistake number 11, master Amazon advertising. Mistake number 12, are you someone who's eager to get seller flex, right? So I remember that I took this decision very early and got excited that, hey, why don't I shift the entire operations from Amazon FBA to Sellerflex? That was a huge mistake. If you are a seller who is just doing a couple of lakhs here and there and you get an invite from Amazon to do Sellerflex, the problem is if you say a yes, it will increase your operational burden by 10 times. Yes, correct. That's 10 times. So before you accept or even apply for Sellerflex, think 10 times. Do I have enough manpower? Do I have enough people to carry out the operation? Do I have a sufficient space? Do I have sufficient electricity? Do I have money to put into the printers and the backup of the internet? If all these answers are yes and you're comfortable, spending your time or you have a team to manage it then it is a good idea but most of us this is a very very bad idea because it's going to increase your operational burden mistake number 13 it is said that the worst number in the business is number one why what if you have only one supplier what if you have only one product what if you have only one channel of selling your product it is a nightmare if that thing gets done. So I remember that mistake number 13 that I did was being dependent on only one employee. Now remember if you are selling on Amazon and you're doing a little bit more business and you only have one employee, that could be a nightmare because that employee leaves. Let's say if that employee doesn't come to the office, what is going to happen? The business comes to a standstill. So always have someone in the backup rather than only being dependent on one thing. Mistake number 14. Always have a very, very thorough understanding of the compliances. So when I started selling on Amazon, I didn't even know there's something called as GST that I have to file on Amazon uh, on my GST portal every single month to get some money back. I didn't even know that there is something called as TDS. If you don't file TDS, then there is a problem because that is required by every Amazon seller or any online seller to even file. So always remember that you should know what are the compliances that you need to focus on and you don't need to do it on your own. You can hire so many consultants and CAs online to do your one-time thing. So always consult and know what are the compliances behind selling online. Mistake number 15. Hey, you know, Amazon is not a skill-based business. Amazon is a capital intensive business. So when I started selling on Amazon, I didn't realize that much that, hey, that Amazon business, like I, I can start with a couple of thousands of rupees on Amazon and I'll make a lot of money. No, that is not how the real world of online selling works. In a product or an inventory based business, the more you make money, the more inventory you need to hold. For example, if you're making one crore rupees of sales, you need to have at least three, four crores of inventory of that product and your money will be blocked over there. So remember one thing that mistake that I have done that Amazon is not a skill based business. It's a 
capital intensive business to grow on amazon you need a lot of capital mistake number 16 amazon will give me financial freedom hey you know what financial freedom is a myth i've never seen a true entrepreneur or an amazon seller actually retiring and going on a beach and working because you know what there are so many moving parts and to be really honest financial freedom is a myth instead what you should be focusing on is financial confidence if you can produce income online with one product you can do it over with second third fourth fifth and even sixth so financial freedom with amazon business is a myth you will never be sitting on a beach all your life and be able to operate your business it will require time it will require effort it will require an office space and it will require a team mistake number 17 A lone wolf dies, but a pack survives. If you have heard about that quote, it will tell you what the mistake is. So, if you are an online seller and you're playing all alone, like you don't have anybody to communicate, you don't have other sellers, you're not in the network of other people, then you will not know what's exactly going in the industry. For example, if your sales go down and it's going down, down, down for a couple of days, you get panic. but what if you are were in a community of all the sellers and you ask this question and they say that yes it's happening with us as well then it's a normal general trend it's not only for your product so don't be a lone wolf always have a group or a community or be a part of a community of like minded high net worth sellers so you can always grow as compared to just being at the same level and know what's going on in the industry Mistake number eighteen: Sell on all marketplaces. Sell on Meesho, Flipkart, Amazon, Ajio. If you have done that mistake, I would recommend you to stop it. I've done that one time, second time, and third time. It doesn't help because if you spread yourself too thin and you don't even master one platform, it's very, very difficult to get so much of sales. So the idea is not to spread thin, but to focus on one thing. So don't you no know, start selling. on all the marketplaces until and unless you have mastered one channel one place at a time mistake number 19 irregular timing or not a proper time to launch your seasonal product i still remember i made a huge mistake where i was trying to sell some diwali related product and it took me a lot of time to even think about the product and i just launched couple of days before the season hit and instead of selling so much it actually i had so much of stock left with me now the reason is not the product that was bad not the price point that was bad the problem was the timing if you are launching any product which is of season you need to understand you have to have at least 15 20 or 25 days before the season kicks in because you will need the momentum you will need the reviews you will need so many work to be done before you launch so do not launch seasonal product before like in just couple of weeks before at least have a good timeline to launch any seasonal product 20th mistake and this is one of the most most critical mistake that most of the people all the newbies who start selling on amazon do hey i want a 30 to 40% margin net on amazon hey, you know what in any scalable business be it e-commerce be it normal business the margins overall after all the expenses is only going to be around 10 to 12%. If you are really good, it can be around 15% in any scalable business. So having a thought 30 to 40% margin for one of the products that may be true but overall business it will never be more than 10 to 15%. So don't focus on 30 to 40%. Know what is truly possible and work on that average. When I was a seller, I was focusing on 30 to 40% product margin. and really i never ended up getting any product so don't be a perfectionist be a progressionist with this 20th tip i would end this video i hope you have liked my video and if you have any questions post in the chat out of the 20 mistakes which mistake have you done and let's talk about that i see you in the next video until then keep selling and keep crushing